Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Last year, we showed you how John Davis and his sons make loose hay on their northern Wisconsin farm using draft horses, a hay loader, and a track and pulley system. Today, John takes us on a short tour of his farm near Kennan, Wisconsin. When John moved from the west coast to northern Wisconsin, the farm he bought was in decline. It was not long before he was making repairs, improvements, and additions. He doubled the size of his barn, built and equipped a milk bottling facility, and designed and outfitted an egg laying house with a wash house and refrigeration system. He began selling milk, eggs, bread, honey, and other products from his farm and continued to grow open pollinated corn, soybeans, oats, and other crops. In many ways, John has developed the kind of farm that operated in the early 1900s. He's aggressively frugal, doesn't trust that bankers, farm equipment salespeople, or fertilizer companies have his best interests at heart, and is a skilled horseman, carpenter, mechanic, and blacksmith. And I done chickens for the simple reason that all the milk, you, you gotta bottle more milk than you can sell. Okay. Because you never want to be. Right, you want to run out. You don't want to run out. Right. And I needed something to feed the milk to. Okay. And I didn't want to do pigs. Right. Not in this country. Right. So I decided chickens, and then I could sell the eggs. It'd be easier than selling pork. So this is what I built. I'll turn this light on. And this hot water heater is heated with this. I'll get to him. See the heat, this is a heat jacket, and the hot water comes up here and in there, and the cold water comes in down here. It just circulates. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so. I got a little pine, these blocks, I throw in a load in the morning and that'll heat. And I do it only in the morning because then I can have the door open and it not heat up the house. Sure. When it gets up to 60 degrees in here, this comes on and blows the warm air out of the room into the chickens. See, it blows it. Oh, sure. Down there. So in the winter, I will keep that stove going. You still have a lot of chickens for, yeah. the, for not having milk anymore. Well, what I do is I sell eggs to the local grocery store. Do you? Okay. And the hot water is for? Washing the eggs and things. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. Here's some of my inventions. Have you noticed them? You mean the door lock? Yeah. The pole? Not really. Um, I just did here. If I if I walk by other ones like that. Now watch. morning so but there's one doesn't didn't get sold that's what we produce sure yeah beautiful and they go in the grocery store huh. and that's the you got to have a sale by and the Julian date yeah and that can just that don't need to be in that rack 
John is always thinking of inventions in other ways to make his farm work more efficiently, using simple solutions. One of those solutions is a machine he built to pick up rocks from his fields. He's been working on it for a few years now, but it probably won't be long before it's working. This is kind of my project. I had a dream one night of a rock picker. Okay. So it's become a nightmare, but I am going to finish it. Okay. So it's like a potato digger for rocks? Yeah, but it kind of works backward. It's, a potato goes, digger goes this way. Right. But this is going to go this way. Okay. And I got to get some long rods and go down there like this and tie them together with, to, and then some angle iron will be welded between ever so many links and it'll drag the rocks up on them rods and dump them into this box. Hmm. Is this, what is this frame from? Is this from a, a, a No, a grader? this was my... No. Built it from scratch. No kidding. Yeah. It was my dream <laughs> that became a nightmare. <laughs> but I am working on it. I was supposed to work on it last winter, but I didn't because I don't have to tell you, we had a pretty tough winter. Yeah. And yeah. this was buried in a snowbank. Yeah. But I'll work on it again. I'll get it going again. <laughs> so... That's what that is. You got enough rocks to make it worthwhile? Yeah, we got rock we don't know what to do with. Okay. It's really a cash crop around here. <laughs> sure. Now this is the corn that we raise. You can see that it's all fairly good sized ears. It sure is. Yeah. And that's what I was telling you a little bit ago. Me and the boy went and to pick a field of corn and we were picking uh, what do you call it? When you breed two breeds together. Hybrid? Hybrid. Yeah. And the ears are little. Yeah. And low to the ground. Okay. And, and these uh, are set up about this high? These are right up here. Yeah. And one ear is a, a whole lot towards a bushel. Right. Well, it took a whole bunch of them little ears down low to the ground. You're bent over all the time and it took a long time to get a wagon filled picking by hand right i found out that if you want to sell an animal you need to have what other people want yep and so here's the horse where i make my horseshoes no you don't i do there's one right there that hasn't got the stuff on it. So I you're made buying it. the bar stock and you're making the shoes? I buy the one inch by three eighths and then I cut it into lengths and make them. You heat them up on that gas forge then? Yep. I used to have a coal forge in here, but... Gas is also convenient. The gas was more convenient and I still got the, the blower. Yeah, the, but, yeah right, right. And one day I'm going to get another one. I'm going to build another one. Yeah, I just got through making some of these. You can see that's homemade. I sure can. Yes, I can. And so you use drill tech on uh, year round? No, you don't run them on pavement. That's just for the winter? This used to be my store. And you'd sell milk out of here? I sold milk, cheese, eggs, bread, honey. Syrup. Really? Had a little store here. Yeah. But now it's a catch-all. That was the plant. That's where we bottled the milk. Can I look at that? Creamery? Is I have problem? a boy that's interested in getting this going again. And there's probably merit in it more so now than ever. It's just a catch-all now. Sure. Kind of get a feel of what it is here. I'll show you how it works. Yeah, please. On the other side of that wall, there's a milk house and a bulk tank. Uh huh. And there's a pipe laying in here that goes and hooks onto that pump. And it pumps the milk into this. And 
all of everything today isn't necessarily science. It's got a lot to do with politics. Right. The valve is bolted on. Uh -huh. And the valve on the bulk tank is threaded on. So you can't take milk from a threaded on valve. You have to pump it into a tank with a bolted on valve. I gotcha. So it's got to go in the tank. Yeah, it has to go in this. Mm -hmm. When nobody's looking, I can just go right past it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's politics. Right. It has nothing to do with the quality of the milk. Right. Then it goes through the separator. Yep. And I control the speed of the separator. Well, the separator runs at full speed, but I control the amount of milk flowing to it with these gadgets. Uh huh. I put the skim milk in here and I put the cream in there and I cook them down. Okay. Once they're cooked, then I put the two together to make 1%, 2% or whole milk or skim. Okay. And I blend them in this, the homogenator. Now if they want cream lined milk or just, you know, cream, then I just Right now, it's fixed to bypass it. I take this off and that off and put a, a plug there and there, and then it becomes a, a homogenizer. Yep. And that keeps the cream from coming to the top. Right. That's the plate cooler. On the other side of that wall is an ice bank that makes the cold water to pump through there. Then I'll be putting one into this and taking milk out of one. And instead of a valve, I just have a, I just switch that. Sure, yep. And same down here, it just switches over. Right, uh-huh. And same up here, this here gets switched over to the bottler. Okay. So I'll be pumping in out of one while I'm filling the other. Then the bottle washer's on the other side of that wall and they come down six at a time and catch on this and this distributes it so it'll all match correctly without breaking glass and put the cap on and swing around and come out and I catch it and bring it into the cooler. Then we're done. How long did you run the creamery? I opened it up in 2000 and I ran it until about four years ago. And, and just, I was tired. Okay, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. The biggest problem I had, it was growing to a point where I was delivering to the stores. And when I was delivering milk, I needed to be here. And when I was here, I needed to be in the field. And when I was in the field, I needed to be delivering milk. And I was working 25 hours a day. And you wonder how I got that extra hour? I was running. <laughs> and I got tired one day. And so I quit running. I said, I've had it. I can't do this anymore. I would have liked to, the money is in bottling. I would have liked to quit the farm end and just did the bottling end. But there'd be no milk to bottle. Right, right. And I didn't want to trust other farmers. I, you didn't want to trust their milk? Yes, I didn't want to trust their milk. You didn't know what was going into those cows? I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And I knew what I was producing. Right. Where we put the wood into the basement. Oh, okay. You heat your house with wood? Yes. We have a, and I built the furnace that's down there. I got hung up on something yeah, there. There you go. So we dump the wood in here, <laughs> then we open that door and fetch it. Huh, okay. So it's out of the weather. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to rush to get it inside. Yeah. Huh. You got a staircase going up the side here. No, that's just no. a roof. Okay. Yeah. No. And that's just a roof. And that roof is that way because they wanted to save the window. Oh, this out or this was here? I knocked it out. Yeah. Uh huh. 
So that was, that's my furnace. That's the draft. But my boy wants me to build a different idea. He's an inventor. Which one? Jacob. Jacob, uh-huh. He wants a water jacket on it instead of, this is an air jacket. Okay. See, there's a, a motor that blows the air up into the duct. Right, uh-huh. Yep, a forced air. Yeah, yeah, and he wants a water jacket and that pull air over a radiator. Okay. And then put the heat up because he's, and I agree with him, the water may very well conduct more heat than air will. So sometimes this thing is just red hot, uh -huh. but I'm not getting the heat that we would like to the have. The heat's getting lost on yes. the way. Yes, yes. So you wouldn't be moving the heat with water all the way through the house. No, it would be, it would be the heat would be the old way would, would have been the put. Heat. The old way would have put uh, radiators all up through the house. Yep, and move the water through the house. Right. But we're going to try it a little different because we already have the ducking. Right. I don't know whether it's going to work, but he wants to try it, so we're going to do that. Hey, I'm Stacy Lynn, and today I am making one of my favorite, most flavorful linguine dishes. It's fast. You can get dinner on the table in 20 minutes with no problem at all. You can make this with meat or without meat. Today I'm doing it without meat, but I'm kind of using something meaty, which is going to be a surprise ingredient as you watch me make it. So here we go. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is start making my linguine because this is going to take the longest to cook in this. So I'm just going to pour, pour it right into my salted water. And I heavily salt my water and it makes it taste amazing. So always remember to do that. I don't really put oil in my water. It just doesn't really to me help anything. So I just put my linguine right down in there and it'll start boiling again. And then I'm gonna let it go until it's just about done. Not quite because I'm gonna cook it again in this amazing sauce that I'm about to make right now. So the sauce, I just use a little bit of olive oil. All right. And I'm turning it on high right now, but I'm gonna turn it down in just a minute because I'm going to get a garlic infused oil going right here. So I'm going to do one garlic clove. I have fun with my garlic. Love garlic. I'm actually going to put two because I just love garlic. Okay, so I'm going to take the skin off of it and then I'm going to crush the garlic. I'm just going to kind of brown the garlic in the olive oil and then I'm going to remove the garlic. So now I'm going to turn on my other eye and the surprise meat of this dish are walnuts. I'm going to chop them just a bit and I'm going to toast them. They're going to be really, really good and meaty. This is a wonderful, wonderful earthy dish. Now they will burn pretty quickly so you're going to want to make sure that you um, that you watch them very closely. It'll take about four minutes, probably about two minutes on one side and then a few on the other. Okay, so I'm going to turn these over. I'm going to brown them on both sides. And I'm getting that great garlicky flavor in here. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat down to medium. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to give a stir to my pasta. All right, so I think I have enough of the flavor of this garlic in here. Now, I am adding what is going to give this dish its special flavor, anchovies. Don't be afraid of anchovies. I'm using about six. I'm going to cook these anchovies until they're completely dissolved or almost completely dissolved. I'm just going to put them right over to the side for later when I get ready to complete my sauce. Okay, so the anchovies are good and dissolved. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. Okay, I'm gonna check the pasta, 
see if it's anywhere near done. It's probably got about three minutes to go. Okay, and we'll be about done with the sauce by then. See how fast you could get supper on the table with just packed full of flavor. It's just going to be so good. I'm going to put a little bit, a pinch of red pepper flakes. My pasta's ready, so I'm going to drain this. I'll be right back. Pour the pasta straight into the pan. All right, I'm gonna give it a good toss. I'm gonna add my walnuts, or most of the walnuts. If you are gonna plate this, you would wanna plate it. Um, I, I have a big white platter, so I would put it straight across there, put a little bit more red pepper flakes, and then top it with the walnuts and a little bit of drizzle of olive oil, and it would be amazing. So, but I'm probably just gonna let my family come by over here at the uh, oven stove and get their own. Okay, so I've got that going. So I'm gonna add about one complete lemon. It's really gonna brighten this dish up and make it so flavorful. All right. And as I said before, during the process, if you want to, while you're cooking the pasta, you can be making a skirt steak and cut it really thin and you can serve it with that or venison or chicken or any kind of meat that you want to. Um, but tonight I am having this just as it is for my dinner. So I'm going to get a little bit of parsley. And mix it in. And again, if you were plating it, just put this right on the top and it'll just be amazing. So here is my favorite linguine dish. Serve it with meat. Don't serve it with meat. Whatever you want to do, it's going to be perfect for your table. 20 minutes to the table. I'm Stacy Lynn. See you next time. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.